In our last ghost episodes we covered the ghosts of India, Indonesia, and Japan, but outside of Asia there are a lot of haunted places to be found too. For this episode we travel to the other side of the world, to an island that is famous for its beautiful beaches, jerk dishes, rum, and not to forget, reggae music. Of course we are talking about Jamaica. Jamaica is a country rich in traditions and folklore. It is a fascinating place full of superstitions and beliefs. Within this tapestry of superstitions you can find a realm where the supernatural reigns supreme, filled with tales of ghosts and spirits that have captivated the imaginations of generations. The stories of these ghosts and legends provide a glimpse into the mystical world that intertwines with the everyday life on the island. From avoiding black cats, to the practices of Obia, a belief system and practice incorporating elements of magic and sorcery for various purposes. Jamaican superstitions provide a unique perspective to explore the realm of the supernatural. Among these beliefs, the presence of ghosts, known as duppies, stands out, fascinating the minds of Jamaicans across the country. Today, we will learn a bit more about these duppies and the supernatural kingdom of Jamaica. Welcome to the Glimp. Duppy. The word duppy is said to have its origins in West Africa, where they call a spirit or soul in a dupon. It is said that through the transatlantic slave trade, the term a dupon was brought to the Caribbean, where it evolved into duppy, and became a part of Jamaican folklore and culture. Duppies have been a common theme in Jamaican music, particularly in genres like dancehall and reggae. A lot of songs refer to these duppies, their supernatural powers and their presence in Jamaica. Famous artists such as Bob Marley, Peter Tosh and Burning Spear have included the topic in their songs, adding to the mystique and cultural significance of these ghosts. Just like duppies and reggae music, rum plays a significant role in Jamaica. And there actually is a connection between these duppies and rum as well. It is believed that rum has the power to appease or ward off duppies, for instance, offering a glass of rum to a duppy can help to satisfy or calm them, preventing them from causing harm or disturbing you. The tradition of giving rum to the ghosts is often practiced during rituals, such as nine night ceremonies, which are held to commemorate the dead. During these ceremonies people pour or offer rum at grave sites or in designated areas to honor the spirits of the deceased. Besides that, rum is sometimes used in other rituals too, mostly within the practices of the Obia. Besides offering rum, there are also other offerings you can make to ward off duppies, such as holy water or food. And trust me, after getting to know these duppies, you really don't want to make them angry, because these duppies are some of the most terrifying beings you can imagine. The Rolling Cough Imagine walking down the street at night and all of a sudden you hear chains dragging somewhere in the darkness. You look intently, but you see nothing. So you keep walking. But there they go again. With each step you make, you hear chains dragging. You look again, and this time, you see two evil red eyes, hungry teeth, attached to an angry, menacing bull. That, my friends, is a rolling calf. The rolling calf is a famous duppy often associated with Jamaican folklore. A shape-shifting spirit that appears as a monstrous, cough-like creature with glowing red eyes. It is said that the rolling cough is the spirit of an unbaptized child or the soul of a person who made a pact with dark forces during their life. You can find these ghosts in the countryside, mostly at night, and its presence is usually accompanied by eerie sounds, such as rattling chains or clanking metal. The rolling cough is well known to be an evil creature, and encountering it is considered to be extremely dangerous. It preys on unsuspecting individuals, chasing them through fields, empty roads, or secluded areas. 
It is said to possess supernatural strength and speed, making it very difficult to escape once the ghost has set its eyes on you. You can try to run, but because of the speed of the ghost, it is likely that you won't be able to be faster. Instead, there are other suggested protective measures you can try to ward off a rolling cough. These include wearing your clothes inside out, carrying a black-handled knife or placing a small handful of sand or salt in your pocket. These actions are believed to confuse the creature. The rolling cough is deeply ingrained in Jamaican culture, and the scary stories about it have been passed down through generations. It serves as a cautionary tale and a reminder to be cautious when going out at night, especially in rural areas. While it is primarily a part of folklore and mythology, a lot of Jamaicans believe in its existence and the potential dangers of it. The Legend of the Golden Table and the River Mama In Jamaican cosmology, the river is known for giving life, transformation, blessings, and connection with the divine. However, for those whose hearts are greedy and stubborn, something nefarious lays wait for their souls. At the bottom of certain rivers lies a table. But not just any table, we are talking about a table made of pure gold. And from time to time, at midday, this table rises to the surface, allowing people to see it. A problem for the greedy people, who usually get mesmerized by the sight of it, and become obsessed with obtaining it. Efforts to get the table always results in the death of those trying to remove it. The legend of the golden table stems from the search to find gold when the Spanish first arrived in Jamaica. But this table is not the only wicked thing in the river. There is also a ghost haunting the waters of Jamaica. River Muma takes no prisoners. She combs her hair, her long, beautiful hair, with a shiny, attractive-looking golden comb. From time to time, she would leave this golden comb on the bank of the river, and the man foolish enough to lay his hand on it, well, dog nam him supper. He would get snatched up and pulled into the river, never to be seen or heard of again. The River Mama is a fascinating ghost in Jamaican folklore. Usually described as a female water spirit, or a mermaid-like creature that lives in rivers, streams, and bodies of water all over the island. The River Mama is said to possess a mesmerizing beauty and she is mostly depicted as an attractive woman with long flowing hair with fish-like attributes such as scales or a fishtail. She has the ability to transform into different forms, including that of a seductive woman or a half-human, half-fish creature. She is a guardian of the waterways and is also associated with the protection of aquatic life. It is said she has the power to control the water, its flow and its inhabitants. She has a deep connection with nature, and her presence is often accompanied by the sound of water flowing or melodic singing. Encountering her can be both enchanting and dangerous. She possesses magical abilities and can lure unsuspecting individuals, especially men, into the water. A lot of times she is described as a vengeful spirit who may drown those who disrespect or harm the natural environment, those who are greedy, or those who attempt to uncover her secrets. To protect yourself from the influence of a river mama, Jamaican folklore suggests various precautions. For instance, try to avoid swimming alone in rivers and refrain yourself from disrespectful behavior towards the water or its inhabitants. Also, don't get greedy when you see a golden object on the river banks and obsess over it. Instead, do the opposite, and instead of taking from her, give her things. Because like a lot of ghosts, she also appreciates the offering of gifts or tributes. Old Hick Nowadays people talk about skinwalkers and shapeshifters. Well, centuries ago, Jamaicans had the old Hig, 
who would shed her mortal human skin and prowl about the night looking for something or someone to consume. Some even suggest that Annie Palmer, the white witch of Rose Hard, was one of these old hicks. She was the most wicked plantation owner of Jamaica. But be not afraid. Because if you find the skin of one of these old hicks, just add salt and pepper. And when she tries to re-enter her skin, watch her screech and scream while she withers and meets her peril. The old hig is a well-known character in Jamaican folklore. Also known as the old hag or succuent in other Caribbean countries, this duppy is believed to be a female supernatural being with the ability to shed her human skin and transform into a ball of fire or a creature resembling an old woman. She is often described as a wrinkled old woman who wears a white gown, and just like the rolling calf, has fiery red eyes. She is a nocturnal creature that visits homes at night, seeking to suck the blood of sleeping individuals, particularly the blood of young children and infants. To do so, she removes her human skin and takes the form of a fireball, allowing her to pass through keyholes or any other small opening to gain entry. She is feared for her supernatural powers and malevolent intentions, however, she is not invincible. A common practice to ward off or capture an old hig is to place a sieve or a strainer near a sleeping person, as it is said that the creature must count the holes before it can continue its blood-sucking activities. This counting process is said to delay her until daybreak, when she must put on her human skin again. The legend of the old hig serves as a cautionary tale for children and a means of explaining unexplained phenomena such as illnesses or unexplained marks on the skin. The story is often used to encourage good behavior and obedience, as kids are warned about the consequences of misbehaving or staying up late. Blackheart Man In Jamaican folklore, the term Blackheart Man refers to a vengeful and feared supernatural entity. It is often depicted as a figure with dark or blackened skin and glowing red eyes, instilling fear and unease in those who encounter it. The Blackheart Man is believed to be a restless spirit that preys on the living. It possesses powerful dark magic and is associated with evil deeds, misfortune and curses. The origins of the Blackheart Man can be different depending on individual interpretations. When I was a boy, the black heart man was told to me as a man with bloodshot eyes and long dreadlocks, who would snatch up children by enticing them with candy and charm. However, as a grown up, I now see that that image of the black heart man was mainly because of the fear of Rastafarians that had no basis in truth. Because you see, the truth is, Anyone can be the black heart man, since that spirit possesses anyone with a wicked heart and evil intentions. As Bonnie Wheeler says, he lives in gullies. He lives in the lonely parts of the country. Now the black heart man has become the wonder of the city. The legend of the Blackheart Man has been popularized in Jamaican music, particularly reggae music, through songs like Blackheart Man by Bunny Whaler. The term is often used metaphorically to represent deceitful, malicious individuals or people that have a negative influence on society. While the stories of the Blackheart Man have contributed to the rich tapestry of Jamaican folklore, it is not a widely recognized or documented supernatural entity and it is important to note that the Blackheart Man is primarily a fictional character and a symbolic figure. Whooping Boy and the Three-Foot Horse The Whooping Boy has long hair and red eyes, and as the name suggests, the Whooping Boy makes a whooping sound and is often seen riding another duppy, the Three-Foot Horse. You can also witness him dancing on twigs in dense woodlands where it is said he is at his most dangerous. 
It is most likely to be encountered in the darkness on a moonlit night, and if you become a victim of this duppy, he will try to kill you by breathing hot air to you. The three-foot horse is a horse with three legs and said to be faster than a normal horse, and also kills its victims by breathing hot air onto them. It can be evaded by climbing in a tree or staying in the moonlight. In life, the whooping boy was a mischievous child that was known to pull horrible pranks on people. Late at night he would hide in the bushes and wait until an unsuspecting traveler passed the bushes he was hiding in. He would then jump out and make loud whooping sounds while swinging his whip, scaring the person away. This prank eventually would become his downfall as one time he scared an old priest, who then died because of a heart attack. The young boy tried to hide the body, but through divine retribution, the kid was attacked by a group of stray dogs which led to his death. Mr. Brown Mr. Brown is a well-known character in Jamaica and is often referred to as a ghost, riding a three-wheeled coffin, haunting various locations in Jamaica. One of Bob Marley's earliest songs, dating back to 1970, is also talking about Mr. Brown, which probably popularized the stories of Mr. Brown. The tales surrounding Mr. Brown are passed down through generations and vary across different regions. Mr. Brown is known for his distinctive appearance, often described as a short, stocky man, dressed in old-fashioned clothing, including a wide-brimmed hat and a long coat. Sometimes he is also depicted with glowing red eyes or a disfigured face, adding to his eerie and supernatural aura. He is believed to roam at night, especially in rural areas, and just like the whooping boy, he is known for playing pranks on unsuspecting individuals. His tricks range from harmless mischief, such as making objects disappear or creating scary sounds, to more serious encounters, like appearing in front of people almost causing a heart attack. Some people say he is a restless spirit seeking revenge while others say he is a guardian of certain locations. Others describe him as a mischievous ghost who simply enjoys scaring and playing tricks on people for his own amusement. Whether the duppies of Jamaica are real or not, the stories around them play a big part in Jamaica society. Hopefully these stories may continue to be told, allowing the spirits to live on, etched in the hearts and minds of those who hear their eerie whispers. In these tales we find not only the spirits of the departed, but also a connection to the soul of Jamaica itself. A land where folklore and reality dance hand in hand. Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, anyone seen Mr. Brown? If you see a three-wheeled coffin and two junkers or vultures asking for Mr. Brown, do as the Jamaicans do, hear and deaf, see and blind, because the next person they could come looking for is you. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more documentaries, and let us know in the comments, what you think we should cover next. Thanks for watching.